This morning, we are taking a closer look at tiny objects. Miniatures help create illusions all around us, from movies to museums to classrooms, even tree houses. Mark Albert shows us how these small wonders have captivated us for generations. A few minutes drive north of acres of blooming skyscrapers in downtown Los Angeles is another construction site with lots of wood, but no blueprints. Okay, that was good. Here, Jed Volz is the architect, foreman, and interior designer. I, I am an incurable dreamer. Everything's imagination for me. Volz is six foot seven, living in his own little world. He's a master of miniatures. From his home in Silver Lake, he crafts intricate tree houses with his hands and tall tales with his mind. Uh, I call this the collector's cabin. It's a uh, um, desert, bearded, white bearded, desert rat kind of guy, prospectory type living in this and running around and adjusting the little lenses and um, drinking some desert grog. This little sailboat that it reminds him of the days on the ocean before he moved out here to the dry world. I love how you have all these elaborate stories to go with each one. Very elaborate, yeah, everyone has its own tale. It's good, right? Mm-hmm. By day, Volts brings other people's creations to life as a prop maker for commercials, music videos, TV shows, and movies. We've got a couple of euphorbias over here. These are But in his spare time, he uses bonsai plants as his muse. At a recent art gallery show, his whimsical tree houses sold out in six hours, going for between five to eight hundred dollars a piece. For you, it's an escape. It is. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's very meditative. An escape from the real world. <laughs> into a smaller version of the real world, yeah. <laughs> it's that escape into the world of miniatures that seems to make us long for where we can't go, or lives we can't live. Who wouldn't want to ice fish on a glacier of frosting, or be the superintendent of a construction site of s'mores? Photographer Christopher Buffali told us about his Big Appetite series in 2014. I like to give the figures a destiny, treat them like characters. The character of these miniatures at the Art Institute of Chicago is in their grandeur and elegance. The Thorn miniature rooms showcase life from the 13th century to World War II, with our evolving styles, tastes, and quirks. They're just mesmerizing. They've been here um, since the 30s, and many people recall coming here with their grandparents, and now they're bringing their grandchildren. They work to kind of charm people into being interested in art. And then there are the miniatures that teach, in this case, to spy tiny clues. The nutshell studies of unexplained death were created by hand, mostly in the 1940s, by eccentric Chicago heiress Frances Glessner Lee. Find the truth in a nutshell, as the saying goes. Her nearly two dozen scenes are death in diorama, her miniature depiction of actual homicide cases. The office of the chief medical examiner of Maryland inherited 18 of them nearly 50 years ago and still uses them every year for a homicide seminar to help teach detectives how to crack a case. This is the Killer Cabinet House. This was commissioned by Dr. Killer, um, an actual person, um, a surgeon in London. And it's a dollhouse to die for, built in the 1830s with original wallpaper, a gilded mirror, and a four-poster bed. It's one of a dozen historic dollhouses on loan from the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, part of a small stories exhibit at the National Building Museum in Washington, D.C. They are fabulous and fascinating and adorable. Kathy Frankel is the head of exhibitions. People come in here and they smile and they gasp a little when they see some of these that are so elaborate. It sort of it takes your breath away. What does it say about us as human beings that we are so captivated with something that we can't really play with, we can't really touch, right. we can just see a tiny little window into this world? Right. It is that window into the world and it was that longing. I think with these it's longing for another time and another place. Let's be honest, Nancy, you really want to be inside the house, yes, don't you? Yes, I do. Yes, I want those servants at my beck and call. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that longing for another world drew in Nancy Wright of Florida and Adrian Garcia, who visited with his class. Well, sometimes I imagine, like, if I was in there, what would I do? It's an allure that is timeless and ageless, just like the dollhouses, one of which, the Edmund Joy wardrobe, is 304 years old. 
It's fascinating. It's a glimpse to history. For Suzanne Bell of Maryland, it's a glimpse into her family's history. Because I was just thinking about my grandfather who died in 1963 at age 93 and he was born in London. So he was born in 1870 and, and lived in a sizable home. So when you see this, you think yeah, of your father. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to think of my grandfather and just trying to imagine what his life was like. And that's the enduring power of miniatures. Whether it's dollhouses or these one square foot dream homes that cap off the exhibit, powerful emotions come out of small spaces. Uh, there's a lot going on here. Uh, at the top, we have a signal tower. Even if your imagination has to go out on a limb. Mark Albert, CBS News, Los Angeles. I do love miniatures. I don't know what the fascination is. I mean, it's not the history. It's just something about your world compressed. Although I would like to be in all of them except for the homicide ones. <laughs> the crime scene one's a little less appealing. Right. <laughs>